Entering Jane's house, I opened the door to a room that seemed like an old storage space. In the corner of the dark room, I found Violet. What on earth happened? As I called out, Violet looked up. She looked very pale. Grandma. Next to Violet were textbooks and workbooks. How long have you been here without even turning on the light? I've been here for a year. What did you just say? Did she study here for a year? And there were dishes and cups around, too. Had she been eating here as well? Can you tell me what's going on, Violet? I took Violet's hand and spoke to her. After hearing Violet's story, I couldn't hide my shock. I never imagined she had suffered so much. The root of all evil was Jane. I left the storage room, completely furious. I found Jane and screamed at her, shaking with anger. What were you thinking, locking a child up in such a place? What you are doing is wrong. Just as Jane was about to retort, the front door opened and someone came into the house. How could you? I stared at a bewildered Jane with a cool gaze. My name is Hillary Taylor, 63 years old. I currently live with my husband, Kyle, just the two of us, and I'm a housewife. Kyle is 65 this year. He's retired, and we spend our days relaxing at home. We have two sons, Kevin and Jeremy. Kevin is 38, and Jeremy is 34. They've long since left the nest and built their own families, so now we only see them during holidays like Christmas and Thanksgiving. Since the younger sins family has no children, our only grandchild is Violet, the daughter of our eldest sins family. Violet is a lively and adorable girl who turns eight this year. She always talks to me, calling out Grandma, Grandma, and gives me her drawings, which she's good at. One of her drawings, featuring smiling portraits of Kyle and me, is displayed prominently in our living room. Looking at it always warms our hearts. I wonder how Violet is doing. I'd like to see her soon. Kyle remarks with a squint. Yes, I do want to see her drawings again. Violet was happily drawing today as well. We believed that. But at that time, we couldn't imagine the unexpected events that were happening to her. It was on a sunny morning. The doorbell rang, and I opened the door. To find Jane standing there. It's been a while, Hillary. Jane, what brings you here, all of a sudden? I was surprised. Jane is our eldest son, Kevin's wife. Since they live about a three-hour train ride from here, they rarely visit our home. What happened to her? Sorry for the sudden visit. I have a favor to ask. What is it? Come in first. I led Jane into the living room. Kyle too was surprised by her unfamiliar presence. Jane, like Kevin, is 38 years old. She looked the same as the last time we met, with light makeup and simple clothes. However, her face seemed to carry a hint of fatigue. Without touching the tea I offered, Jane started to speak. Hillary, Kyle, I actually need to borrow some money. What? Why? It's for Violet's tuition. She's attending a tutoring now, 
but we're thinking of enrolling her in another one that has a track record of sending students to top schools. To Turing. I was taken aback. Violet is still in elementary school. Isn't tutoring unnecessary at her age? I was about to say so, but times have changed, and I'm not familiar with the current educational situation. Therefore, I couldn't strongly object. Violet wants to become a lawyer. That's why she needs to focus on her studies from now on. That's the first time I'm hearing this. Violet loves drawing. I seem to recall that she previously mentioned wanting to pursue a career in drawing or illustration. I was puzzled. Suddenly, Jane's eyes narrowed sharply. How can you say that? That's not possible. Violet is going to become a lawyer no matter what anyone says. So, please lend us the money. Jane's vehement demand made both Kyle and me shrink back. If that's the case, we need to check with Kevin first. Kyle said, to which Jane suddenly regained her composure and answered with a smile. Kyle, it's okay. Kevin agrees to. We'll pay you back as soon as we get the bonus. But she's already attending a tutoring, right? and you're saying to add another one. Hillary, the competition starts from elementary school these days. Without good education, you're left behind in society. It's all for Violet's future. Please understand, I beg you. Now she was tearfully making her plea. Kyle and I exchanged looks and fell silent. It's hard to argue when it's for Violet's future. I'd like to hear it directly from Violet, though. Violet is studying hard at home right now, not wanting to waste any time. She's really trying her best. So, please don't disturb her. Shouldn't we, as adults, do everything possible to support Violet's wishes? Is that so? How much do you need? For now, just $1,000 for the summer core skis. The payment deadline is close. Kyle sighed. All right, if that's what Violet wants to do. Yes, I'll withdraw it from the bank. Thus, we lent the money to Jane. But it was all news to me. I had no idea Violet wanted to be a lawyer. But after all, we are just grandparents and don't live with her. It's no wonder Violet has a change of mind. That's what I thought, trying to convince myself. But the story didn't end there. A few days later, while reading the newspaper, Kyle looked up and said thoughtfully, About Violet? Does she really want to become a lawyer? I mean, if she truly thinks so, of course, I'll support her. But it was quite unexpected. Yes, maybe we should hear it from Violet herself. I decided to make a phone call. Violet doesn't have a cell phone. The only way to communicate with her would be through Jane. Hello, Jane, thanks for the other day. Is Violet there? Can I talk to her? Violet, she can't answer the phone. She's busy. Jane responded curtly. Just for a short while. Then Jane suddenly started yelling. Just for a while. What if she misses solving even one problem during that time? The entrance test for the tutoring we talked about is coming up. The test scores will determine her class placement. She has to get into the top class or she'll fall behind. Do you know how hard it is to catch up after that? I was taken aback by Jane's torrential tirade. And since she was completely unyielding, I had no choice but to reluctantly end the call. 
How did it go? Kyle asked anxiously, and I shook my head. No good, Jane wouldn't put her on the phone. What? Why? I don't understand it myself. I'll try calling Kevin. I searched for Kevin's name on my smartphone's contact list. In fact, Kevin was not living with Jane currently. He had been on a work assignment alone for about a year now. He proudly told me last year that the company had high hopes for him and promised a promotion upon his return from this assignment. I didn't want to involve him too much, but it seemed necessary now. Kevin answered the phone immediately. Hello, Bo, it's you, Mom. Sorry to bother you when you're busy, it's about Violet. I briefly recounted my exchange with Jane. Then Kevin expressed surprise. Wait, what? Violet wants to be a lawyer. I've never heard of that. Kevin, like us, had never heard of it. Moreover, he was unaware that Jane had become so enthusiastic about Violet's education. Being away from home for a year, it's no wonder. I'm not quite sure, but maybe Jane has started saying some odd stuff. I'm swamped with work right now. It'll be a while before I can return home, but I'll try to talk to them in person next time. That would be better. It might be nosy, but I'm really curious about Jane's sudden change. Is it that weird? Oh, now that I mentioned it, speaking of lawyers. Kevin shared something with me. It was enough to fuel my anxiety. Over the weekend, Kyle and I visited Jane's house. It was about the eldest son's family. Maybe it's wrong for me to interfere. Still, I had a bad feeling about it. After all, Jane was just screaming, and we hadn't really heard Violet's side of things. I wanted to know what Violet thought. Besides, she is now a fatherless life, which means a single-parent home. I wondered how Violet was spending her time alone with Jane. When I rang the bell and introduced ourselves, Jane came out in a panic. What's the matter, Hillary and Kyle? Jane was clearly flustered. A friend of mine lives around here, so I was just stopping by on my way back from visiting her. I responded with a smile. A little white lie can't hurt. By the way, is Violet around? Jane fumbled for an answer to my question. Well, she's not feeling well and is resting in the back. I'm sorry for the inconvenience even though you've come all this way. It's all right, I just wanted to see her for a bit. No, but she probably wouldn't want to meet you. So maybe not today. Jane was adamant about not letting us see Violet, not budging an inch. Something felt off. At that moment, Kyle spoke up. Ouch. My back. My chronic back problem. Kyle crouched down, clutching his back. Are you okay? He glanced at me. He said it wasn't chance. Jane, is there a chiropractor around here? Well, I think... We still have the taxi waiting over there. Could you show us the way? Sorry for the trouble. Kyle forcefully asked Jane for directions and headed towards the taxi. As I watched the two of them leave, I muttered, Sorry, Jane. Then, I entered the house. It was silent, with no sign of anyone around. I opened each room door, searching for Violet. Violet, 
Where are you, Violet? She wasn't in any of those rooms. The last place left was an unused, old storage room. There, in the dark room, was Violet. With resolve, I opened the door. What's going on? When I spoke, Violet looked up. Her face, which I hadn't seen in a while, seemed terribly pale. Next to Violet were textbooks and workbooks. Grandma. Why are you here in the dark, without even the light on? I've been studying here the whole time, using a flashlight to save on the electricity bill, solving problems. Violet spoke weakly. Since when? For a year, I've been here. What? Studying in a place like this for a year. And there were dishes and cups around. Was she eating here as well? Can you tell me what's going on, Violet? I took Violet's hand, urging her to talk. But... Violet hesitated. I wonder if she's afraid of Jane. Don't worry, Violet. Grandma is on your side. Violet started to cry and began to speak haltingly. And then she began to speak haltingly. This was Violet's story. A year ago, when Kevin was transferred to work alone, and Violet was left to live with Jane. That's when changes in Jane began. While Violet was drawing as usual, Jane spoke to her. Violet, you're already eight years old. You should start focusing more on your studies for middle school, not just drawing silly pictures all the time. Of course, Violet argued back. But Jane wouldn't listen. On the contrary, she tore up the illustration of the Violet. Listen, stop wasting time on drawings that won't benefit your future. You're going to be a lawyer. It's a respected profession, helping people. Sounds good, right? Jane said this with a smile. That's when Violet's days of hell began. She was forced to attend tutoring, dealing with a massive amount of homework. Though only in third grade, Violet was pushed to study at a middle school level for accelerated education. Rest was not an option. If test results were poor, Jane would rage and berate Violet. Eventually, Violet was told, as punishment, you'll live in the storage room, making her eat and study there. Moreover, if you can't answer the questions, you don't deserve to sleep inside the house, so she slept under the eaves. Sometimes, Kevin would return from his assignment. However, Jane would act normally only when Kevin was home. She also made sure to warn Violet, you know what will happen if you tell your dad, right? This made it impossible for anyone to seek help. I was stunned by these revelations. Jane's behavior wasn't just being enthusiastic about education. It was clearly excessive. I was trembling with anger. Jane said it was for Violet's future, but this is not for Violet. I've been drawing these secretly because I would get scolded by Mom. Violet showed me a piece of paper. There was a colorful drawing. It was a bright and cheerful picture that seemed to bring joy to anyone who looked at it. Thinking that she had been drawing with all her might in such a hellish environment made my heart ache. Clearly, Violet doesn't want to be a lawyer. It was all Jane's imposition. What was she thinking, forcing Violet to do this and lying to us? 
I looked into Violet's eyes and said, I understand now, thank you for telling me, let's go to my place for now, it's not good for you to stay here. The more I heard, the more convinced I became. Jane was not in a state to accept reasoning. The priority was to get Violet out of this house. Then, there was a commotion near the entrance. Jane and Kyle must have returned. Violet, wait here for a bit. I told her and stepped out of the storage room. I had to speak clearly to Jane. Seeing me come out of the room, Jane raised her voice. Hillary, how dare you enter the room without permission? Did you and Kyle deceive me, pretending his back hurt? Looking past Jane, I saw Kyle now standing up straight. I'm sorry about that, but you've been lying too, right? Saying Violet wants to be a lawyer, that's a blatant lie, locking a child up like that. What were you thinking? Jane retorted with anger in her face. I'm not lying. Violet is going to be a lawyer. That's what's been decided. Kyle was taken aback by Jane's furious outburst. The reason for her obsession with the lawyer. That was the answer to what Kevin told me the other day. It's not Violet, it's you who wanted to be a lawyer, right? Well, Jane, struck by the truth stumbled over her words. According to Kevin, Jane once aspired to be a lawyer, but failed the exams. She became an office worker because she was unable to obtain a license to be a lawyer. Then she met Kevin and got married, and perhaps after having Violet, she was reminded of her old dream. It seemed she was trying to live out her own desires through her child. I spoke to her firmly. At that moment, the front door opened. Children are not tools for fulfilling your dreams. Education is important, but not to the extent of forcing it like this. You are trapped in your past and do not see Violet as she is now. Be quiet. What do you know, Hillary? Becoming a lawyer means a secure future. It's all for Violet's sake. Jane's continued shouting was painfully desperate. Then the front door opened. The person who entered the living room was Kevin. Kevin, why, how did you? Jane was perplexed. He was panting in his suit. He hurried back from his workplace. I got a call from mom and was worried, so I came back early. I had no idea it had come to this. Ignoring me, Jane desperately pleaded to Kevin. It's all a misunderstanding. I want to support Violet's dream. Kevin was not confused by Jane's words. I heard from mom. You visited mom to borrow money to put Violet in an expensive tutoring, right? And you lied about me agreeing to it. Chastised by Kevin, Jane momentarily looked guilty. But she quickly regained her composure and began to speak. This was an investment for the future, not really a debt. Jane mumbled her excuses. At that moment, Kevin looked around and picked up a document from the desk. Is this the tutoring? It turned out to be an application form for tutoring. The pamphlet contained the convenient words dramatic grade improvement and success in entering prestigious high schools. Despite Violet already attending one, Jane was planning to enroll her in even more. Looking around house, books on child education methods were scattered everywhere. 
including an application for a seminar titled Turning Your Child into a Genius. Of course, it would cost something. The amount of money being spent was shocking. Kevin looked at the tutoring application, appalled. It's so expensive. What are you thinking? But I manage with my savings from before I was married. Recently it's not been enough, so I just asked your parents for help. Jane made an excuse on the spur of the moment. She doesn't seem to think he's at fault one bit. Kevin sighed in frustration, deciding to ignore Jane. It looks like Kyle has decided to ignore Jane from now on. Turning to me, he said wearily. There's no point in talking to Jane anymore. Where is Violet? She's in the storage room in the back. She's been isolated there as a punishment for not being able to study. She even eats and sleeps there under the eaves. I just can't leave Violet here. Upon hearing this, Kevin exploded. What? That's unbelievable. Then Violet came out of the room. Dad, you're back. She was noticeably thinner, with dark circles under her eyes. Seeing her, Kevin embraced Violet. I'm so sorry, Violet. I didn't realize. I'm sorry. He then glared at Jane. Violet can't stay here anymore. I'll take her with me. That's best. You can't just decide that. Kevin shouted at Jane, you was persistently pressing the issue. I can't leave her with you anymore. Reflect on your actions alone. Jane flinched and fell silent. Leaving Jane standing there, Kevin, Violet, Kyle and I left the house. We headed towards the station, starting to walk. During this time, Kevin was still handling calls from work, indicating he was extremely busy. After finishing the call, Kevin apologized to us. Sorry, Mom. Work is hectic. Could you look after Violet for a while? I'll sort things out once things calm down. Of course. We'll take good care of Violet. Don't worry. Are you okay, Violet? I turned to Violet. Yeah, I'm okay. Violet looked a bit anxious. I wonder if Jane's spell hasn't been broken yet. I squeezed her hand reassuringly. By the time we reached home, it was completely dark. Violet finished her dinner and fell asleep immediately. She must have been under a lot of pressure lately. She seemed to have worn herself out completely. Poor child, being forced into this. I couldn't help but tear up looking at Violet's sleeping face. I never imagined it would come to this. Kyle sighed deeply. Kevin left Violet in our care and returned to his posting. Kevin said he was going to persuade Jane, but can he? My worries proved accurate. A week later, Kevin contacted us. He had been trying to reason with Jane in between his busy work schedule. Kevin repeatedly tried to persuade Jane urging her to realize the foolishness of her actions and to change her ways. However, Jane showed no signs of repentance. Far from showing remorse, Jane even said, where have you put Violet? She will fall behind in her studies. There are tests coming up soon. Are you still talking like that? Go back to who you were. Kevin pleaded, but she retorted immediately. I'm normal. 
I'm the one who thinks about Violet more than anyone else. Despite hours of conversation, no resolution was reached, eventually leading to her hanging up the phone. The situation was at a standstill. It was around the time discussions emerged about considering divorce and Kevin formally taking custody of Violet. One morning, the doorbell rang, and when I opened the door, then there was Jane standing there. Jane. She was in her pajamas, her hair a mess, and her eyes were wild. Hillary. Violet is here, right? Give her back to me. She barged in, searching for Violet. What's going on? Kyle was shocked by her sudden appearance. Ignoring him, Jane rushed upstairs. Violet, Violet. I hurried after her, and she found the room where Violet was. Mom. Upon seeing Jane, Violet exclaimed in surprise. Come on, Violet, we're leaving. You have a test to study for. What are you talking about, Violet is? I tried to interject, but Jane shouted. Stay out of her, Hillary. Violet stood up, confused by her mother's sudden visit and she declared firmly. I won't go back. What are you saying? I won't become a lawyer. Studying is important, but I have other things I want to do in the future. Don't decide my future without me. Violet's assertive tone shocked Jane, distorting her face. I embraced Violet's shoulders. Well said, Violet. But Jane, furious, glared at me. I get it, you must have brainwashed Violet, and forgivable, she is going to become a lawyer. The idea that we had brainwashed Violet was absurd. Jane has become uncommunicative. Even though I thought it was pointless, I raised my voice. I just had to say this one thing. What are you talking about? Wake up, can't you hear your child's real voice? Violet is suffering because of what you're doing. You keep saying it's for the child, but you're only thinking of yourself. If you want to be a lawyer so badly, you should pursue it yourself, not force it on Violet. Huh. Jane fell silent, looking frustrated. But in the next moment, Jane's eyes gleamed sharply. And she grabbed Violet's arm as if to use force. Come on, Violet, you need to study. No. Let me go, Mom. Violet protested, trying to pull away as Jane dragged her out of the room. Wait. Violet resisted. During their struggle, they lost balance. Watch out. Kyle shouted. But it was too late. They tumbled down the stairs. Violet, chain. When I called out, Violet responded with I'm okay and managed to get up, but Jane remained motionless. Kyle immediately called an ambulance. I was bewildered by the serious turn of events. Jane was quickly taken to the hospital by ambulance. She took an MRI, but there was no brain problem, and she suffered a temporary concussion. However, even after regaining consciousness, she appeared unable to distinguish reality, repeating disturbing words as if delirious. Violet, you need to study, Violet. The extent of her obsession became frightening. Jane then began to act out violently. Jane became erratic, 
crying out suddenly and mistaking a nurse for Violet, she shouted, study. Observing this, the doctor remarked, it seems her mental state is more of a concern than her physical health. Jane was transferred to the psychiatric department. The doctor said she should stay in the hospital for a while because of her raging and screaming. I felt there was something wrong with her, but she had a problem with her mind. Afterward, having hospitalized Jane, we contacted her parents. We asked them to come to the hospital to explain Jane's recent condition. Her parents were visibly pale. They never imagined their daughter would end up like this. Jane's parents promised to take good care of her. After some time, Kevin expressed his wish to divorce Jane. Jane naturally refused. However, Kevin initiated legal proceedings, and as a result, the divorce was finalized. Kevin gaining custody of Violet. Later, we were called by Jane's parents and visited the hospital again. We've caused you so much trouble. In the hospital's meeting room, Jane's mother apologized deeply. Then, they handed us an envelope. This is the money she borrowed. We are very sorry. It was the $1,000 that she said was needed for Violet's tutoring, which she borrowed from me and Kyle. It seemed Jane's parents had covered the debt. I looked intently at their faces. Despite being around their 60s, just like us, Jane's parents looked much older. This turmoil must have aged them considerably. Thank you kindly, how's Jane doing? I casually asked. That's just it, she hasn't improved much, she keeps shouting at anyone to study or yelling you must become a lawyer, so we have no choice but to keep her here for a while longer. Saying that, Jane's mother sighed. Apparently, when Jane was young, her parents incessantly told her to study hard and aim for a respectable career. Sometimes even yelling at her when her grades were poor. I wonder if it's because we pushed Jane too hard when she was young that things turned out this way. It's too late now, but we deeply regret it. Jane's mother's unexpected confession left me with mixed feelings. This was the root of Jane's breakdown. A negative cycle passed down from her parents to Jane, and then to Violet. However, this cycle had to be stopped. With resolve, I declared. Children have their own happiness. When parents impose too many of their ideals, it can break the child's spirit. Violet was also in danger of this. From now on, Kevin and we will take responsibility to ensure Violet grows up freely and happily. Jane's mother was in tears. She must be reflecting on what she did to little Jane. I hope that from now on, they can live while offering support to Jane, whose spirit has been broken. With these thoughts, we left the hospital. Afterward, Violet and Kevin began living with us. Kevin requested a transfer. Kevin negotiated with his superiors to work at a branch near our family home. I was worried that this might affect his chances for promotion, but Kevin reassured me, dismissing the concern as if it were nothing. It's all right. I've been too focused on work and overlooked the discrepancies in Jane and Violet's relationship, which I regret. Now, I want to be more attentive to Violet. Saying this, Kevin smiled. 
Fortunately, Kevin, who had an understanding boss, won the promotion on his performance. This brought us relief. Violet has regained her brightness since then. The move necessitated a school change, which initially worried us. But Violet said, I'd rather transfer schools. In her previous environment, academic pressure had limited her playtime with friends. It seems that this led to Violet becoming isolated. However, Violet made a lot of new friends after she changed schools and became brighter. Now, she enjoys drawing her favorite illustrations and sharing them with everyone. She smiles and says she wants to be an illustrator in the future. Seeing Violet return to her original self and being happy is the most joyful thing for us. Parents worry about their children's future. And parents tend to put more rails on their children than they need. But if you make a mistake, it's just an imposition of your ideal. We keep this in mind, gently overseeing their growth. The most important thing is Violet's smile. We continue to hope that Violet will grow up healthy and happy.